This is part one of the calculus section of our aeronautical engineering course. We're going to use calculus to determine the performance of a propeller, the thrust from it. We'll use it to figure out the stress on a propeller shaft. We'll use it to figure out the stress on a wing spar. So let's just go ahead and dive right into calculus. That's the best way to get your feet wet, so to speak, isn't it? What's the integral of x dx? Well, anytime you see just a plain old x, that means x to the 1 power. Kind of like 2 to the 1 power is here's 2 to the 1 equals 2 any number 856 to the 1 power equals 856 anything to the 1 power equals itself anything to the 0 power is equal to 1 57 to the 0 power 2 to the 0 power is 1 1 to the 0 power is 1 I don't know what zero to the zero power is. Let's see. Oops, that's an error. Can't do that one. Got to be a real number. Okay, but then any number to the second power. Oops, better clear it. Two to the second power is two times two. Four. Eight to the second power is eight times eight, which is 64. So anytime you see just a plain old number without a superscript right there, just assume it's a one. So the integral of x dx is equal to x to the, carry that 1 over here, and we add another 1 to it, and then we just grab all that and stick it under there. In other words, the integral of x dx is x squared over 2. Well, what about the integral of x squared dx? Well, you add 1 to that 2, it's equal x to the 3, divided by 3. Integral of x to the 4th dx equals x to the 5th over 5. What about the integral of x to the 1 half dx? Well, it's x to the 0.5 plus 1 x to the 1.5 power divided by 1.5. What's x to the third? Integral of x to the third power dx. We'll just write 0.333. Of course, that goes on forever. The integral of x to the third dx equals x to the 1 and a third divided by 1 and a third. Now that we've dived into calculus, let's go back to the beginning and learn it the way they teach it in college. Okay, let's say we want to figure out the area under the y equals x line. You ever heard of a Cartesian plane where that's the y axis, this is the x axis, and this line going up at a 45 degree angle would be y equals x. Let's say this is zero, and let's say this is x equals 1, so if x is equal to 1, then y is equal to 1, because y is equal to x. So we draw us a dotted line over here and say y equals 1. If x is 1 half, y is equal to 1 half. If x is 0.70352, then y is 0.70352. Whatever x is, that's what y is. Okay, let's see. We want to figure out the area under this y equals x curve. Let's see, we drew a bunch of little rectangles under here. This could take a while, but you get the picture. We're drawing all these rectangles here. And let's say we add up the areas of all these rectangles. Well, obviously, the more rectangles we have, the closer their areas are going to be to the area of this triangle. Okay, you may say, what's the point in using calculus? And we can plainly see that the, the triangle's area from 0 to 1 is 1 half. 
because the area of this whole square here is one by one, which is one. So there's half of it in that triangle. There's half of it in that triangle. It's obvious that the area of this triangle is one half. <clears throat> okay, the reason we'll use calculus is because it works on lines that aren't straight. We'll be using it in the future on these curvy lines. But being this one straight, well, doesn't seem like we should be using it, but let's use it anyway. Okay, we'll get those problems later. So we can estimate the area under the line by figuring the area of a bunch of rectangles. Adding the areas of these rectangles gives us an area that's close to the area of the triangle, especially if we have a bunch of these little rectangles. If they were big rectangles and had a lot of width between there and there, well then obviously their area wouldn't come, the sum of their areas wouldn't come as close to the area under this line as the sum of the areas of these skinnier rectangles. Okay, the more rectangles we use, the closer the sum of the rectangular areas comes to the triangle's area. The height of each rectangle is y. See like this rectangle is y high. Okay, y is a variable along this line, x is a variable along this line. Okay, the width of each rectangle from there to there, we're going to call that delta x. We use the Greek letter delta to mean change of. Okay, so the area of each triangle is y delta x. The area of this triangle right here it's y high, <coughs> it's delta x wide, so it's area equals y times delta x. Okay, the value of y is determined by the value of x. In other words, y is a function of x. In this particular case, y equals x. If we have a lot of triangles, delta x approaches zero. I mean a lot of rectangles. See, we we don't have many if we draw them that wide. We have more of them if we draw them that wide. But if we draw them real skinny, their area approaches the area under this line. Okay, as the number of rectangles approaches infinity, and the width of delta x approaches zero, the sum of these rectangles areas equals the area of the triangle made by the line. The mathematical way of saying this is the sum of y delta x, which means adding up all these little areas of all these delta x's, as delta x approaches zero, that doesn't look much like a delta, there we go, is equal to the integral of y dx. This Greek letter sigma here is used to mean the sum of, and this symbol looks like a giant S, is used to mean the integral of, so the sum of all these infinitely narrow slivers areas equals the integral of y dx. Think of dx as an infinitely small delta x. In this particular case, y equals x, so the integral of y dx, okay, the integral of y dx is equal to the integral of x dx, because y is equal to x. We can read it right there. <clears throat> okay, the integral of x to the n dx yeah, let's write it up here. This is what we learned when we dived right into calculus. The integral of x to the n dx, yeah, it's an n, may not look like one, equals x to the n plus 1, looks like an h now, over n plus 1. So the integral of x dx is equal to x squared over 2. 
if we let 0 and 1 be our limits of integration because we're integrating from x equals 0 to x equals 1, well then we'll write our 0 to 1 there. So we plug in 1 into the x spot and we have 1 squared over 2, which is 1 half. And then we subtract 0 squared over 2. See, we're plugging 0 in for x now. Minus 0 equals 1 half. Just like we figured at the beginning, the area of this triangle is 1 half. Here's the curve y equals x squared. So let's figure out the area under this curve. Okay, well, first off, let's see what y equals x squared is. If x is 1, well, 1 squared is 1, so y is 1 when x is 1. If x is 1 half, y is 1 half squared, which is 1 half times 1 half, which would be 1 fourth, so there we have y equals 1 fourth. If x is 0, well, 0 times 0 is 0, so y equals 0. What if x were halfway between here and there? It would be 1 fourth, so y would be 1 sixteenth. So let's say we want to figure out the area underneath this curve, between the curve and here, from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Let's draw us a little typical sliver of area here. And you can draw it anywhere between 0 and 1. Well, its height is y. Its width, we better draw it down here is delta x, so its area, say dA, little unit of area, equals y times delta x, or maybe I should have said delta, maybe I should just say area, the sliver, equals y delta x. So if we want to find out the areas of all these little slivers underneath this line, when we have an infinite number of these slivers, then we say the summation of y delta x as delta x approaches zero. In other words, an infinite number of these equals the integral of y dx. Okay, but in this case, y is equal to x squared. So the integral of y dx is going to equal the integral of x squared dx. So what's the integral of x squared dx? Well, x to the 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1, which is x cubed over 3. And if our limits of integration are from 0 to 1, Let's plug them in and see what we get. Let's plug 1 in for x. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 cubed. Divided by 3 is 1 third. And then subtract 0 times 0 times 0 divided by 3. Minus 0 equals 1 third. That's the area underneath this curve.